Yeah, what's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, we will be teaching you how to... <laughs> hey guys, today I will be teaching you some tips and tricks to get you some new info. The first tip is on dizzy heights. There's actually an alignment of discs that all sit beside each other, all going in the same direction. So it can get you ahead of a lot of people. It even works when you spawn on the very right side, because there's another disc that aligns with it. If you mess up, don't walk against the spinner. It's literally like walking the opposite direction of an escalator. On the section where the balls are shooting at you, you can actually just dive to the corner and the ball won't roll over you. But don't dive too early or you'll slam right into the ball. Now guys, I know some of you forget this, but please remember there's a gap here. Just, there's a gap here. On big fans, you can actually balance on the pole and get to the other side of the fan. Lots of people know this, but I'm just saying. It even works for each and every fan. So it works for the big fan, the medium fan, and the small fan. So don't worry. For griefing, <laughs> all you want to do is just shove somebody into the abyss. On Jinx, when you get the fan variation, all you want to do is jump dive onto the fan, wait for it to turn on, and once it turns on, nobody can grab you because you're floating in the air, so nobody can grab you. And then once it turns off and you're not safe, you want to go over to Yellow's podium and just keep an eye out for Jinx people and jump dive back on when it's on and just repeat that. When you get perfect match, to help you memorize the fruits better, what I like to do is I like to jump on the fruits I'm memorizing. So, orange, cherry, orange, cherry, orange. And what you can also do is once you memorize them enough, you can trick people. I didn't get anybody here, but it's super fun when you do get somebody. So over here, let's see, uh, it was mango or apple, whatever you want to call it. I stayed on not mango, then I jump dive right on at last second. It also works for some fruit, if you were wondering. When you get the pole variation though, I just stand in the corner and then the pole doesn't hit me and then I memorize the fruits that way. And if you don't want to memorize the fruits, I just go in the middle of the pole and it's a bit risky though. On Skyline Stumble, if you don't want to get whipped by the flipper a billion times, you can actually just jump dive grab on the bridge. And on the section where there's the invisible barrier walls and the buttons that activate it, the little glowing lines actually indicate what button activates the barrier wall. On Short Circuit, at the very start, unless you're in the front and the middle, don't go for the block that you can grab on. It will literally get you nowhere and you'll be stuck behind for the rest of your life. Literally. And at the button part, at least leave one low gravity zone because everybody behind you will struggle. And then <laughs> when you come around, you will struggle. So let's have a little bit of teamwork here so that we can all have happiness. But that's not gonna happen, cause what is this game? What is this game? What is this game? On Snowball Survival, when there's only one snowball, all you wanna do is just keep your camera on the snowball and the you'll, you'll be able to dodge it by then, so yeah. Also, for fun, I just like to walk up the ice and see how high I can get. It's fun, but it's very risky, so don't do it unless you're good at the game um for griefing though you can either push people off and they will fall into the abyss just like the fan one or break the ice and somebody is guaranteed to fall in on hoopsie legends don't go for the gold hoop that's the only tip i have just don't go for it like look at this poor kid who got eliminated because he went for the gold hoop on hexering if you're an aggressive player, you want to deploy all the hexagons in the front. Because when you're doing that, all the passive players are going to run out of hexagons to go on, and they'll get eliminated. If you're a passive player though, what you want to do is stay in the middle, 
look for hexagon so that you aren't the passive players that get eliminated and don't go too far front or too far back because if you go too far front or too far back it will end up getting you eliminated team tail tag everybody loves it right <laughs> not me okay what i like to do is i go down i snatch a tail I run away from them because they're probably very angry at me. Then I go down the slime. Then I go back up on the podium. Then I go down the slime again. Then I go back up the podium. Then I go down the slime again. Then I go back up the podium. And eventually it gets me eliminated because my team sucks so bad. On Hoopsie Daisy, what I like to do is as soon as the game starts, I get the hoop that is nearest to me. And then, after that, I just stay in one area. Because if you go all over the map, you'll be like, Oh my gosh, there's a hoop! But then somebody who is closer to the hoop will get it. But for me, I stay in one area. This area for me was the ramp section with like the jumper thing. And my team ended up winning. Because I stayed in that area. On tiptoe... On slime climb, what people say is the hardest round, at the very start, if you're doing the bouncer trick, go behind the bouncer, because everybody else is going for the front of the bouncer. So if you do the bouncer trick from behind, it will up your chances of being able to do the bouncer trick in general. But if you think you're not good at the bouncer trick, or you're just really far behind, you can jump dive over this wall, and it will cut a corner. Then, after that, you can jump over the fence, which will cut another corner, and then walk up to the block, and you can actually jump dive on it to cut another corner, and then go and jump on the conveyor belt to cut another corner, and jump every two seconds so that the conveyor belt isn't always pulling on you. Then, don't jump on the poles, because it will actually lower your chances of being able to balance on it when you jump on them. Or, if you're a more skilled player, you can actually, like, climb on the wall. I don't know why that happens, but it happens, so. Then you can jump dive onto this wall to cut another corner. And, for fun, what I like to do is jump dive on the blocks. It kind of helps, but I just like doing it for fun and a challenge. You can also do it with the blocks at the second layer. And then, after that, you just want to, like go to the very side and keep your camera on the bouncers so you don't get bounced off and ladies and gentlemen my favorite part griefin so what you want to do is grab somebody push them into a pole sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work it doesn't matter it's fine or you can scare somebody to death that they'll just die now Watch and learn, gentlemen. This is the last person. I'm about to just shove this guy into the abyss. So, just walk up to him, grab him in their path, they will fly, and then the pole will take them away. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. On Hexagon, at the very start of the match, there's really nothing you can do, because everybody's just looking for Hexagons. So just stay away from the runners, and stay on top as long as possible, and just make sure you don't drop a million layers. For griefing, walk up to somebody and shove them. Let me just slow that down for a second. So what you want to do is walk up to somebody, block their path, then grab them so they have no momentum to jump or move anywhere. Then right before the hexagons are almost gone, you want to jump and then they will fall, but you won't. So it's kind of helpful if you want to eliminate people. Now another strategy is a jump dive strategy. It's actually pretty hard, but once you master it, it saves you so many hexagons. And it's just good, so just keep on learning it and it will help you, trust me. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if any of these tips helped you, leave it in the comments. I'd love to know if they helped you or not. Please subscribe, it helps me a lot to post these videos, but apparently these tips don't work, because these guys over here deploy all the hexagons, and they give no life to anybody. What is this game? What is this? Hey guys, sorry I haven't posted in such a long time. It's been like over a month now. Um, so after I was done my vacation, 
I literally was like, oh yeah, I'm so excited to edit these new videos. And all of a sudden, I just got dead sick, dead tired. I was in bed the whole day. Like, I wish I could have. I couldn't though. But I got it out as soon as possible. And I'm gonna try editing a lot more videos and try getting it out much sooner now. But again, school has also started. So it's also that's also some pretty bad stuff but for my upload schedule it's not bad it's not bad it's not so i am making some videos about season two but then again it's kind of hard to edit really quickly so i might not get them out super soon but i will try my absolute best to get them out as soon as possible i'm gonna try to do it the day it comes out but i might not be able to and i have one more video about doing the satellite repair mission um i'm going to try to to get that out as soon as possible but i only have a lot of so much time here like sorry guys but please subscribe because that boosts my energy don't know why but if you don't like my videos <laughs> don't subscribe you know what i'm saying but um anyways uh i'll see you in the next video so see you later guys